Ah, feedback. That topic that makes its way repeatedly into the executive coaching room. Whether it is delivering some really personally tricky feedback or it's having a conversation on quite an emotionally charged topic. How we deliver this stuff is often a topic of much deliberation and much consideration as it should be because feedback can be a very sensitive thing and if delivered wrongly it can do more damage than good. So we're right to ponder this stuff, we're right to question how we go about delivering feedback. Now for today's session I just have one tip for you to think about because I would say this is quite a generalized thing that you can do to really set yourself up and save yourself time and deliberation in the future. And that is contracting for the type of feedback that you're going to be able to give individuals. What do I mean by this? So let's say you have a new working relationship or you've had a, you have a working relationship that has encountered a couple of storms. It might be a really great uh, relationship, but you've hit a couple of bumpy patches. This is an opportunity to calibrate or recalibrate how you communicate with each other. And one of the best questions you get to ask here in the context of feedback is, how do you like to receive feedback and how do you react to feedback, right? If you can get these questions in earlier in the relationship, before the actual feedback stuff arises or before it arises again, you may have already had one experience which has sort of triggered a communication conversation. And now you really want to set the relationship up for future conversations. If you can have that kind of an honest discussion and really agree how to deliver it best, you can take so much of the second guessing out and you also almost gold pave that relationship for being one which is going to have more honesty in it. Because time and time again, when I ask and contract for that kind of honesty and that kind of radical honesty, people are really on board with it. They're on board with having an honest conversation. They're on board with receiving that more direct feedback. What's tricky is when it comes up as almost a bit of a surprise. They are delivered a juicy set of 360s or somebody gives them some maybe not well delivered feedback either in the moment or after an event and it just lands funny and it doesn't really have the desired impact. If we can get into the habit of checking in earlier, then when the actual moment arises, we're much better prepared. We know that the individual has a particular way of responding because they have almost had to tell us out loud. And we've also prepared them for this type of honest and open relationship where feedback is very much in service of the relationship, the working relationship, the collaboration, the team and the organization. So you've positioned any feedback for much greater success. Now, let me give you um, one recent example of how this came up, how this framing became so important. I had an individual in one of my groups who was had a mentor relationship with uh, somebody at work. And as part of his work and interactions, he had come across a number of observations about his mentee that he kind of felt like it was his responsibility to share with her. The thing is, he didn't have a direct reporting line to her. So it, it, it is kind of up for debate whether it was his responsibility or not. But he felt compelled. He felt it was important. And he had some sense of responsibility towards her that she was going to benefit from knowing this feedback uh, in her career growth. And yet he was aware that she could be prone to some defensiveness here um, and that it may just really upset her. So he was struggling um, around how to best deliver this feedback. We actually did a role play of it. Um, and what became very apparent in that role play was 
there was very little that he was going to be able to do at that stage of the relationship to just go for a casual coffee, which, by the way, is not the way that you ever want to be delivering um, half harsh feedback, going for a casual coffee in an open setting where others can then see emotion on your face. If you really want to deliver some serious feedback, then you want to make sure that you're in a quiet environment. That's an aside. Um, the role play that we, you know, we carried out was he he had sort of set it up as a, a casual coffee where he was then going to deliver some of this feedback. And I'm as I'm saying, that is really too late to decide that you are, as part of your mentor relationship, also going to offer unsolicited feedback. Yeah? It's just not going to go down as well. It's harder for you to broach. And if you are aware of sensitivities um, and that this could be taken the wrong way because the individual hasn't signaled that they really, really want that kind of feedback, then you're very well-intentioned feedback could go awry. So in that scenario, what we identified was that before any such feedback could be given, especially where lines are blurry and it is not a direct reporting line, the most important thing is to establish if and when that type of feedback is delivered. Then you can have a conversation about how best to do that. What would be a nice way to do that? Is it on some sort of a regular basis? Is it ad hoc when it arises? And how much the individual really wants that kind of feedback? I wanted to give that example just because I know often we are in much more direct uh, working relationships where it's very clear, you know, why that feedback needs to be given because you're either in a collaboration or there is a line management reporting situation. But I wanted to give that example because it was more blurry and it shows very clearly the importance of setting up any form of relationship that is going to require honesty, collaboration and feedback in the moment and relatively regularly. It shows how much you can pave the way for better communication just by doing that upfront stuff. And that doesn't mean that it's too late in any relationship. All you need to say in your working relationships is, I want to work on our communication styles in general and my own. And one of the things that I want to do is make sure that I best deliver important feedback as and when it arises. And I'd love to have a chat with you about how best to do that going forward. If you can do that, you get ahead of it. You're not messing around in the moment. And nine times out of 10, you have paved the way for a much calmer conversation around these topics. I hope that's helpful for you. Let me know. Let me know if you give it a go. And I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye bye.